Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. As Carl indicated, I've got two tattoos. The first one, back in 1995, I matriculated into the tattoo parlor <laughs> and got this. This is my eagle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> now, the eagle represents the United States. I think I'm a patriotic fellow. Most people in here, I think, are patriotic individuals. Probably all of us are patriotic individuals. And the eagle is a symbol of the United States, and that's why I got the tattoo. Also, it happens to be a cover-up of another tattoo that got misspelled during the initiation process. So, the eagle, the inner part of the eagle, the thick black part, went over that tattoo, and I don't think you can see any lettering, especially not from the back. But I want to talk about my other tattoo. That one is most important to me, and has the most symbolism, and is near and dear to my heart. That one is on my other shoulder. Now, who in here speaks French? No one. Okay, Tom, maybe a little bit. <laughs> well, I'm going to write it out for you. Now, it might be difficult to see from the back, but I will explain to you what I'm writing down. The same words that are on my tattoo. In French. I tested the markers out beforehand, and I found that the orange one had the uh, was the darkest, but it still might be difficult to see. That's Ser le bon cause et mer. Ser, sir, la, the, bon, good, cause, cause, a, and, mer, die. Now, I worked for the United States Intelligence, the Defense Intelligence Agency, and you have to be at least a little bit suicidal <laughs> to work for United States intelligence. But this isn't about suicide. And that gets me into a little bit about the other symbolism of my tattoo. The letters on here. A, N, and most recently, an H. The H is a little darker because I, a year and a half after my daughter was born, I got the H added on somewhat belatedly. But the, these are the names of my children. A for Adrian, my oldest, 17 years old, about to be a senior at Pacific Grove High School and graduating next year. N for Nicholas, my second oldest, 15, who's a real sweetheart, loves playing video games, loves watching videos on YouTube. Hopefully he doesn't find the NPS Toastmasters <laughs> videos on YouTube. <laughs> and H for Heidi, that's my daughter, born October 26, 2016. And we're all in good stead here because Arnie, of course, is her godfather. Certainly, I would die for my children. The last thing you want to do in your life is bury your child. But certainly, it's the natural course of events that your child will bury you. However, I'd much rather live for them than die for them. But that's what this is all about. Serving the good cause and thinking about the deadline, thinking about all the time in life that you have. We all live on a deadline. Eventually, we're all going to get there. And it's all about what you do between this moment and that moment. There's another part of the tattoo. A nice big circle with a star. I'm not the best drawer. But imagine this is a five-pointed star. <laughs> More like a demented garlic bread or something. <laughs> and there's a head in the middle of it. Now, the head was originally taken from Gray's Anatomy. And it was taken by a band called the Sisters of Mercy. Not, not the Order of Nuns, rather the band, the Sisters of Mercy. <laughs> if anyone is familiar with them. It's the old uh, logo from their 
a publishing company, Merciful Release. One of my favorite bands, but the symbolism behind the star and the head inside the star is to get inside your head by any means possible. Again, serving the good cause and thinking about what you have left in life. Getting inside your head, right thought, right action. The Buddhist thing. You can even think about the death of the ego, the cessation of desire, cessation of attachment. All those things are incorporated into my tattoo, and that's why I got it. Also, I just happened to get back from Baghdad, and I thought it was long about time that my left shoulder have a twin to my right shoulder. Now, if I was really had a sense of humor about it, I would have gotten something totally opposite from the eagle, such as a swastika. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. But rather, I chose to memorialize one of my logos, or one of my uh, ethos in life. But people ask me, why French? Why is it in French? And that's because, much like the band logo in the middle, I stole this from the French Foreign Legion. Anyone familiar with the French Foreign Legion? Oh, many of you. Excellent. At one of my favorite movies, Beau at the end of it, there's a legionnaire who is bearing this tattoo, Sir Le Bon Cause et Mer, and I lifted it from there. I combined it with my band logo, I added my kids' initials, and I made it my own. And that, my friends, are my tattoos. Mr. Toastmaster. Mm. It's certainly an honor to evaluate Andrew's speech, and I, I did have that opportunity to hear the speech that, that he gave and see the feedback that he received and hear that, and then watch this speech as he incorporated it. There are three things I want to talk about that I think are particularly excellent in the speech, and then I'll talk about a few areas for improvement. And it happens that the areas of excellence along with the areas of improvement are interrelated. The first thing I, I want to talk about is, did he accomplish his purpose? And because I saw the quantity and quality of feedback that he got, and how he adapted his speech based on that, I can tell you he did accomplish his purpose. If you were going to summarize all the feedback he got into one main point, it would be focus. And he took that speech, and he focused it down on what was really important. And what was important? That leads into the second major positive in the speech. And that was the symbolism and the symbols, their meaning to him. And he revealed those to us in a way that was much more cogent with greater clarity. He reticulated from the first speech to the second speech in an excellent manner. And as a consequence, because he revealed the symbolism and the meaning to us in more depth and with more clarity as he gave the speech, there was greater audience interest and understanding of his message. Those are the things that I think were particularly valuable and particularly strong in the speech. How could Andrew make this speech better? He started off with a strong voice, but you could hear emotion in his voice as he's speaking. This is very personal to him. I think he could have taken advantage of that emotion, and especially as he structured his speech, you can see the structure. I think with better transitions, stronger transitions, you could have revealed more there, and especially brought those emotions in. Now, this is my first tattoo. It's a cover-up. It's an American Eagle. It means something to me. But my second tattoo, this is where my heart is, and this is where my professional and personal life all come together. In his use of the board, it certainly served to help us understand the symbolism and the meaning, but it also meant that he had to turn his back on us quite a bit. I would suggest that you may want to go ahead and write the things up there and just 
underline them for emphasis, or maybe use PowerPoint or something like that to help you um, with that. I think that you could have ended with a stronger flourish because it was a very powerful emotional speech. I think you could have encapsulated some of that meaning of, you know, take one of those things you talked about, the death of ego or something like that, and pour everything into that as a focal point for the ending. It was an incredibly good speech. Thank you for taking on this path, and I'm looking forward to your next project.